Well, I got back yesterday from Mexico, and um, so I want to read a poem that I wrote a year ago in Mexico. We happened to be in a little town um, on St. Valentine's Day, and this is uh, the poem that came from that. Love in the State of Puebla. With unabashed impunity, roots of the huge rubber tree wrapped to embrace a patch of fuchsia bougainvillea at its base, while jacaranda blossoms whisper lyrics of lavender love songs to the evening breeze. If you find yourself in Atlixco, 14 de Febrero, you will surely be inclined to love. Red dancing dresses in the shop window suggest you could be alluring in any one of them. In the central plaza, stone fountain cherubs have become cupids, spewing the mist of romance into lovelorn air. The laurel tree leans to kiss quivering leaves of a nearby ficus, while the balloon vendor makes eyes at a shy, shoeshine man taking refuge behind his chair. A pink ruffled toddler on the paseo courts a coy pigeon that bobs its head, yes, as it waddles away from her advances. Adolescent boys, hair pomaded and clean shirts pressed, walk with their arms around young girls in heels and filmy skirts that swirl around their dark, shape, dark shapely legs. Kneeling on the ground around a Norfolk pine, a little ragged boy is devoted to his work, scooping dirt into the plastic cup with his tiny ice cream spoon. The turtle-shaped planter makes stationary love to the lush grass it crouches above. Mariachis woo the men who have paid them to serenade their ladies. The long gray braids of a household maid touch the blue plaid apron draped over her arm as she takes the hand of a weathered man with thick white hair groomed away from his face. A solitary novia carries a red teddy bear in a basket attached to a heart-shaped balloon. Later in bed she will clutch it to her breasts as if it were her lover. Overjoyed by the skates he can make, a young boy crushes his shoes into two plastic bottles and scoots across the marble floor of the gazebo's ice cream store. Undaunted, a declining sun makes one last pass at an ascending half moon that winks from a discreet distance. An optimistic young man with limbs wrapped around his beloved whispers suggestive rhymes into her left ear as he dances her backwards between the trees. While a makeshift stage fills with paid guitaristas crooning cheesy love songs as if there's a need for inspiration, a borracho mumbling to no audience but God comes on to the tile bench and curls his rubbery limbs against his chest. The groom at the altar of the colonial church, which smells tonight of lilies and roses, is hopelessly devoted to his angelic-faced bride in tears of white tulle. And I am in love with the man who has brought me to this country I adore, and who holds me on the balcony of this colonial hotel on the Zocalo as the night's first star flirts with the steeple light on the hilltop church. This is a, an April poem for a little neighbor, neighbor girl who has built her treehouse. It's called Selena's Treehouse. She has made herself a playhouse, a shanty lean-to of fallen branches and scrap lumber, assembled with a woman's eye for design, creative reuse, and a child's fanciful ease of re-seeing the imperfect. An adequate year-round retreat tucked beneath a tree limb in an obscure corner of her fenced backyard. But it's April and her drab duckling tree has become fairy queen in inverse tutu of pale green and mauve. For two weeks this diminutive homemaker is walled in emergent blossoms, roofed in magnolia perfume. Her fantasies layered in striations of pink she climbs high into private space, suffused in beauty. And in honor of the Holy Week that's uh, just a few weeks behind us, this poem was written in, the, in France 
during Holy Week I had heard that the, um, that the crown of thorns is housed at Notre Dame and that they bring it out once a year on Good Friday. And it was almost Good Friday, so. Crown of one thorn, Notre Dame Cathedral. A young priest prays in a glassed off chapel as he waits for the penitents of Paris to open their hearts and his door for confessions. But for now, it is only I who come hoarding my sins, offering instead for my Lenten cleansing only questions, questions about the crown of thorns. We settle on a lingua or two, we can traverse like unsteady planks that might, laid side by side, bridge a ravine. He studies me with deep, kind eyes, trying, I suppose, to fathom the nature of my devotion. Am I a sensation seeker obsessed with tormented piety, just another curious tourist, or a devout pilgrim uplifted by proximity to the crucifixion relic? I wonder at the story he tells about that revered instrument of inventive mockery and homespun torture. He explains how in Turkey a cash-strapped Byzantine emperor offered it as collateral for a loan. Imagine the desperation behind pawning Christ's corona, along with a sizable chunk of the cross. The moneylenders had it in Venice when the French king, Louis, arranged for its purchase and transport to France. He commissioned Saint-Chapelle to be the church-size reliquary. But the good Saint Louis kept popping off a thorn or two to ingratiate himself with family or foreign royalty until just one bar was left, <laughs> one lone splinter of relic. And do I have it even partly right with my wanting something I cannot name, stumbling across and forth across rickety bridges of languages and worldviews foreign to us both? I ask him what it feels like to touch branches that encircle the forehead of Jesus. While he speaks to me in his low, deliberate voice, I try to imagine how a seminarian from West Africa got to Notre Dame. I find myself crying, and I don't know why, the thought of being in the presence of the crown of thorns, or because I will not even be here on Good Friday to see it displayed for veneration, or just because he is so kind and so beautiful with his skin the color of fertile earth before planting. Oh. Oh. Art. She perched on the edge of the bed, pulled dark, unruly hair over her left shoulder till it fell across her breast, as he began to paint on her back a waterfall that cascaded over her shoulder blade landed turbulent in the pool of her spine, sp small. Froth and swirl of white water cast a mist over the morning. They were drenched in the spray, unable to keep their footing on submerged rocks, pulled under by the rush of it. <laughs>